during the time of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhum, there was a youngster who would spend a lot of time in the masjid. He would engage in excessive worship. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhum loved him for his worship. He would come to the masjid and he would go home. He would come to the masjid and he would go home. Uh, he had an elderly father who would always be waiting for him at night till he comes home and settles him into the home. So on the path to the masjid, there was a young lady who was infatuated with him. And she tried all types of tricks, winking at him, waving at him, uh, you know, getting his attention, trying to draw him in to come to her, and he wouldn't fall for it. Then one evening, when he was returning from the masjid, and she called him on, and he then decided to respond to her call. And he followed her towards her home and entered into the home. As he entered the home, he thought of one verse of the Noble Qur'an and then he fell down unconscious. The girl now thought to herself, she's in a predicament. Here's a strange man in her home, fallen unconscious. What does she do? So she called her helper and they dragged the body of the young man outside the home and left it there. The father, who would always be waiting for his son, waited and waited and waited. Eventually he decided... Let me go see where is my boy. So he went out. And then he found the boy laying unconscious upon the path. So he picked him up and he carried him home. And he settled him in home. Uh, he then sprinkled some water and tried to bring him back to consciousness. Eventually he got him to gain consciousness. After he gained consciousness, the father then asked the boy, What happened? So he explained and he said that, this girl used to wait on the path and used to always try to seduce me. And I used to always just pass by. And this evening, I then followed her into the home. And as I followed her into the home, I remembered a verse of the Noble Quran. And then I fell unconscious. So the father then asked, which verse of the Noble Quran is it that you remembered? And the boy read the verse, Inna alladheena attaqaw. إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا That verily the people of Taqawa, when shaitan has his effect on them, they immediately remember Allah. And when the boy read this verse at this point, he then passed away. The father then made the arrangement for the burial. It was at night. And they buried him in Jannatul Baqi. And the matter was then you know, completed very quickly. The next morning, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu asked about the boy. And they say, the boy passed away last night and we buried him. So he then asked, why didn't you inform me? She says, it was late at night, Amir al we didn't want to give you the trouble of having to come out. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu goes to the home of the father. He makes taziyat, he offers his condolences. And then he goes to the qabristan and he visits the qabr of the boy. And as he's sitting at the cover of the boy, he reads the verse from Surah Rahman. وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ For the one who fears standing before Allah, Allah will grant him two jannats. And lo and behold, from the cover itself, the boy responds and says, O oh, Amirul Al-Mu'mineen, Allah has granted me both of that and more. This was because of the fear of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is it linked to? The realization that we are to leave this world one day. In numerous verses of the Noble Quran, Allah Rabbul Izza calls upon us as man that remember death. Ainama takunu yudrikumul maut. Wherever you are, death will come to you on its appointed time. Not a moment earlier, not a moment later. It has its fixed time and it will come to you on its fixed time. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Remember death frequently because it is the destroyer of all pleasures. When you think about the fact that you have to leave this world and leave everything behind, suddenly your whole focus changes. And therefore, when Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu would stand by the qabr, he would weep and weep and weep to the extent that his beard would become soaked. And people asked him, that why is it that you weep so much in the qabr? We don't 
see any other station where you weep as much as when you're standing by the qabr. And he said, the qabr is the first stage of the akhirah. When a man goes down six feet, what happens at that moment, whatever is going to happen after that is going to be similar to that. So if there's hospitality for him when he comes down, then the hospitality will just increase and increase and increase and he will enjoy himself more. But when he goes down, if there is punishment, then there will just be more and more of that to come afterwards. That is why when I stand by the qabr, it makes me weep. So the ulama of the sawf and the sufiyah, they say that every night, every person should sit in a quiet corner of the home and for a moment just reflect that here I'm sitting and my soul has left my body. My wife, my kids have come. Is he gone? Daddy is gone. And you're sitting and you're watching. Now they're talking to each other. Call the doctor. What are we going to do? Eventually they conclude he's gone. Let's put the announcement out on WhatsApp that this person has passed on. Everybody's talking about my death. Now they're taking me out of the home to the ghusl khana to do my ghusl. Yeah, I'm being taken. I can observe everything, but I'm helpless. I cannot do anything. The water is being poured on me. They're doing my ghusl. Now they're wrapping me in the coffin. Now they're taking me back to the home. Now they've taken me to the qabristan. Now they're lowering me into the qabr. Now they're putting the planks on and the sand on. They've completed the burial process. Now everybody's leaving. I'm alone here. I need to respond to the questions of the angels. The angel comes and asks, Mar Rabbuk, who is your Rabb? Ma Deenuk, what is your religion? Man Hadar Rajul, who is this man? How am I going to respond? Do I know the answers? Now I'm in the Qabr. Is it going to be hospitality or is it going to be punishment? I'm waiting for Qiyamah to take place. Now Qiyamah has started. Now it's the reckoning of deeds. My deeds are being weighed. And at that point you picture your good deeds to be more than your evil deeds. Now we're proceeding to the Hawth. I'm optimistic that I will drink from the Hawth, from the hands of Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now I'm crossing the Sirat and I'm into Jannah. And this is the type of muraqabah that a person should do on a daily basis. And when one does this, what is the benefit? Firstly, it will lead to you making tawbah immediately. The second is, you'll find that your heart will become detached from the dunya and your heart will be turned towards the akhirah. التجافي عن دار الغرور والإنابة للدار الخلود والاستعداد للموت قبل النزول You find that the world or the place of deception your heart will turn away from it and your heart will be inclined to the world of eternity the world of the akhirah and you will start preparing for death before death comes on you That is the benefit that will come Umar bin Abdul Aziz the rightly guided khalif he would have special majalis, special gatherings in which they would only talk about death and they would talk about qiyamah and they would weep so much that someone says that if you would be walking past, you would think there is actually a mayat here, that that is how they would weep when they would listen to you know, the events and how things would unfold after death and on the day of qiyamah. So for us, we need to make our time on a daily basis to remember death and ma ba'd al maut in a hadith it comes that whoever says allahumma barik lana fi maut wa fi ma ba'd al maut 25 times every day allah will grant that person the position of a shaheed even if he dies in his own bed may allah grant us all the death of shahada